If you've been following this channel for any length of time, you know that Russian forces have been working tirelessly to take the town of Volodar, but they, for a variety of reasons, aren't able to make even the slightest bit of progress. We're going to be breaking down why with some viral drone footage that helps us see just how Russian tactics have evolved, or I guess not evolved. Let's get into it. Okay, so... One, you can see a pretty standard tank advance. Now, you may be asking yourself, here's three tanks making an advance along a roadway here. You may say, this terrain looks really open. Why are they along this road? And it's true. The treads on tanks are designed to let them traverse open fields like this. The problem is that in a lot of cases, these fields are heavily mined, forcing... Uh, Russian forces to choose very specific routes to clear. And in this case, it's much easier to clear a designated road. So chances are they have, they, this could be the effort to clear the road, or they could use a separate mine clearing uh, vehicle or even light infantry with metal detectors to sweep this road and ensure that the path is clear. Um, you can see that, of course, doing so in these big open fields would be much, much, much more difficult. And if you did so, it would be hard to know exactly where the cleared path is. Uh, but there is a whole field of, of mine clearing and marking cleared areas. And uh, the U.S. military uses something called a miklik to clear mines, uh, among other things. Um, let's see if we can find it. Uh, miklik. I don't know if I spelled that right. No, it's giving me the the medical logistics command. Uh, let's see, mine clearing. Eh? Mine clearing. There we go. The mine clearing line charge. Mine clearing line charge, or Miklik, <laughs> is a device used to create a breach in minefields under combat conditions. What is it? Well, it literally shoots out a big long. Uh, it shoots out a rocket pulling a string uh, of plastic explosive. Then it deploys, you can see in the air, landing across a uh, minefield of some distance. This is, uh, for example, uh, another example of this line charge in action. This is being used to destroy uh, surplus ammunition, but it would lie down, and then when it detonates, it clears a one-vehicle-wide path in the terrain, and you know for sure that it has destroyed or disabled any mines. It's much, much, much faster than uh, manually doing mine clearing operations. And as we're going to see, uh, speed in mine clearing is sort of essential, right? So these uh, vehicles are making their way, advancing towards Volodar. This has actually uh, been geolocated to the south uh, east of the city. We're going to, I'll show you guys where this is on the map real quick so you can get oriented. Um, right. Volodar here is in the southern portion of the front, uh, right down here. Now you may be looking and you may think to yourself, Paul, oh, Volodar is kind of a stepping stone to nowhere. There's no major towns. It's not part of their larger strategic effort. It's a small the mining village, essentially, uh, surrounded on all sides by open terrain. Very, very difficult to approach. And the general thinking is that this is taking place in this area here, uh, and that they're trying to make an advance probably up this one of these two roadways here in an effort to get here and then to approach uh, Volodar proper. Of course, as you guys can see, there's just not that many approaches, basically here, uh, and then some of these roadways here. That's it. Those are your options to get to Volodar, which means, of course, that Ukrainian forces have a fairly easy job of knowing where the Russians might be in the future. Okay, so you can see here that uh, already, once again, we're, we're censoring a lot here just to make sure we comply with YouTube's terms of service. Um, but... I do just want to point out that uh, if you 
are aware, YouTube and Patreon even have been cracking down on this, um, on war content and analysis. Uh, so I've launched my own site, combatvetnews.com. Uh, we have, of course, uh, all of my YouTube videos appearing here. We also have a members only area. Uh, we have the same exact tiers um, of membership as the Patreon, but critically, they're all less expensive. Uh, and you can support what I do here. You can see in the members only area, we have GoPro footage, intense drone footage, uh, trench clearing, uh, and all the Patreon archives. So if you want to support what I do, please check that out in the description. It's it's the only way I can continue to do this, uh, given the constraints I'm under by uh, the big tech establishment. Okay, so you can see here, right, it looks like this artillery uh, shell show indicates that Ukrainian forces have dialed in. They are aware of this attack and they have probably they're using this as what's called a TRP, a target reference point. This is a known location on the battlefield. Usually exactly what this is, a major choke point. You can see a previous attack occurred here as well. And there's a number of vehicles that haven't been extracted yet. So you've got this, this TRP, this major crossroads, and you know that when the enemy's getting there, right, you just just want to you don't need to do the calculations to figure out oh where are they you just simply say hey they're at trp1 alpha you already have planned out a fire mission for trp1 alpha and so you instantly start putting rounds down range now it's also possible that this represents a ram and we're going to take a look yeah so here's why i think that's a ram so you can see here the lead uh tank has hit a mine um but artillery anti-tank so we're going to say show you guys here you go the remote anti-armor mine system is an artillery shell stuffed full of like a gusher uh, except full of uh anti uh tank mines <laughs> so what happens is this of course uh detonates all right it was developed around the 80s um and it had they have a 24-hour self-destruct time and that's to comply with uh the treaty on landmines um but they are uh, deployed onto the battlefield. They, you know, explode and scatter these mines in a general area. Um, there have been around 10,000 of these rounds sent to Ukraine. Uh, they're considered part of like area denial is the, the, the technical term for this. And it just creates an area where the enemy cannot traverse. And luckily... These aren't permanent mines, right? They self-destruct, so they're not going to interfere or cause casualties after the war, but they are pretty useful. As you can see, uh, it seems like this has already disabled this lead tank here, and you'll see the crew begin to extract themselves from the tank, uh, but you can see as well that the remainder of this offensive is these BMPs. These BMPs realize that the RAM system has already deployed mines here, and they begin to turn around. Um, I think that's probably what happened. This probably was a cleared route, and the Ukrainians have just immediately, with one fire mission, with one shell, turned it into a no longer cleared area. Um, a real testament to the effectiveness of this ram system you can see here's the tank crew beginning to extract themselves and these bmps are just turning around uh which is sort of messed up because uh you know a more cohesive unit uh would give this crew a chance to climb onto the bmps and, and self-extract not leave them uh in the middle of the battlefield especially in an area that clearly has has been targeted before. So you can see, right, you saw there briefly, there was another artillery uh, uh, strike, probably deploying more mines further down the path. As you can see here, here they are ret uh, returning to base, RTBing. But what's interesting, we'll see here in a second, is that the RAM system has already deployed mines over the route that they've already driven. They think this route's clear because they passed through it just a few uh, hours or maybe even minutes ago, but it's not because the RAM system... Oh, no, actually, sorry. That is a remote... Um, one of those German mines that actually sort of like engages targets remotely. Uh, so some Ukrainian infantry have probably set this up um, 
and they know that they're uh, returning, uh, and this mine triggers them, or this triggers the mine. So you can see here, you'll see that it hasn't, uh, the crew begins to ditch, right? There's uh, one member of the crew who's already climbed out and is uh, hopping off this this vehicle. Uh, and the remainder of the crew, right, is going to start to ditch once this, this uh, runs into this debris pile. But you guys can see just the level of, of destruction here in these major choke points. They really just... Uh, it's so clear that there's so few options available uh, to Russian forces with their current equipment. Uh, again, in the U.S. military, if we if we did a frontal assault like this that failed, um, the alternative there would have to be some sort of alternative. And we, using night vision, for example, could go at night. We could attempt to use air assets. We could attempt to do a helicopter insertion. Uh, we could attempt to use light infantry to uh, breach a hole. Uh, there's many, many options, but you re it requires two things to explore those different options. The first is properly equipped troops. If you have no night vision, you can't have a night operation. And two, if you have no paratroopers or no helicopters, you can't do an air assault. Two, though, you need to have properly trained troops. And uh, sophisticated tactics require longer periods of training. If you want to have a coordinated, multi-pronged assault, you need to not just have radios, but you have to have commanders capable of leading small units in real time and flexing and changing their plans. You need to have individual tank crew members that can not just uh, uh, operate the tanks on a basic level, but shoot, move, communicate, maneuver, um, respond to situations on the ground and that requires you know months and months of training and these uh russians probably have weeks of training and so when you have limited equipment and limited abilities you only are left with some pretty poor options and there's probably the vehicle cooking off um you're only left with some really poor options as far as what you can do um and that's where the Russians have resorted to. You can see here they are laying more mines or trying to finish the job with artillery. Um, but all in all, guys, this is, of course, emblematic of how broken the Russian command system is. Um, not just their command system, but the entire military system has uh, in its way sort of regressed and become a more simple military and don't get me wrong, you can win wars with simple tactics. In some ways, simple tactics are better to execute. But if you rely only on predictable, simple tactics, you're not going to achieve the battlefield effects you need, especially against a technologically sophisticated military uh, like Ukraine has quickly become. Anyway, guys, that's all I had. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check out combatvetnews.net.com, and I'll see you guys in the next one.